Hey there, I'm Cybersecurity Meg. Welcome back to my channel. I'm super stoked that you're here. Today's video is a very important one to me and something I feel really needs to be discussed within the cybersecurity community. Essentially, this is an open letter to anyone and everyone who is struggling to break into a cybersecurity career. As always, I use my phone to organize my notes about what I want to speak about, so if you see me looking down, I'm not being rude, I'm literally just trying to keep us organized. So let's get right into it. Generally, when you're trying to break into cybersecurity, if you're struggling to do so, it's not you. It's not me either, but it is the company that you're applying to. And the reason I say this is because there's two different things companies or the government tends to do incorrectly when they're hiring for cybersecurity. One, let me say this very clear right in the beginning of the video because it really irks me. You can't have an entry level position that asks for five years of experience and a CISSP certification. Let me say it again for anyone who didn't hear me clearly. You can't have an entry level position that asks for five years of experience and a CISSP certification. So if you work in HR, please go edit your profile now. Pause the video and just go edit the profile for your job posting right now. Because I'm getting real tired of seeing it. It's not cool HR. Caveat number two to this main point. The companies tend not to know exactly what they're looking for. So if you're looking on a job posting site, LinkedIn, Monster, Glassdoor, Indeed, what have you, and you're looking at a profile, and this specific job asks for an IM administrator, a threat intelligence analyst, an incident response analyst, a cloud architect, this company has no idea what they need. So they're just asking for everything. It's highly unrealistic that someone's going to have all four of those pillars and be a subject matter expert in all four of them. Now, of course, if you're looking to apply at an SMB or a smaller company, chances are they don't have the resources to hire all these different departments with the various subject matter experts. So then it kind of makes more logical sense for them to be asking for someone who has kind of the entire package. But if you see this, I mean, this is a bit of a signal for me and it's kind of a red flag. It's just not a realistic expectation. So a lot of the times when someone's struggling to break into cybersecurity, it's because the company they're applying for doesn't exactly know what they want. And when they don't know what profile they're actually looking for or the profile they think they're looking for has unrealistic and overzealous expectations, this adversely affects all the candidates who are applying for the job. And of course, it affects you in a negative way. And it affects the company in a negative way too. You'll oftentimes see that when these really fancy schmancy positions get posted for an incident response manager or a SOC analyst tier three, and they're sitting there for three or four months, it's because when you read the description of the posting, they're asking for something that's just not realistic. So if this is applicable to you, try not to be so harsh on yourself. Chances are your resume is great, your background is solid, your knowledge is fantastic, your attitude is perseverant, and the company is the one in the relationship who needs to work on themselves. This leads into another thought that I have, and it kind of correlates back to what we just spoke about. If you're applying for a position and you notice in the requirements that it asks for five years of experience, but you only have three or four years of experience, please apply anyway. <laughs> These companies, again, a lot of times they have very unrealistic expectations of what they're asking for. Chances are, even though you don't have the set years amount of experience, that your attitude, your hard work, your perseverance, your people skills, all of these soft skills that you have, they make up for what you're lacking in the number of years that you don't have. So don't let this discourage you. Don't go to a position that you know you're qualified for, that you know you can do an amazing job at, that you know you can make a change at the company and not apply because you're just one or two years shy of something. This doesn't make sense. So please, I beg of you, we have a million some odd people shortage of cybersecurity. 
apply for the job. The worst that can happen is they say no and you learn something from it. One thing that really irks me is when I go on Reddit or Facebook, wherever I'm a member of a cybersecurity group, and there's someone who's brand new to cybersecurity. Like, they're a complete green bean. They know nothing, which is perfectly fine. And this person, they're asking for tips on how to further their understanding about cybersecurity. They're asking, hey, I'm a beginner. What should I do so that I can advance my knowledge? And automatically, you see all, all these floods of comments about how the person should spin up you know, hundreds of dollars worth of virtual machines on Azure and make their own AD environment and buy this and buy that. And this is just so unrealistic in this day and age, especially when we're going through coronavirus. Can we please stop the expectation that everyone has the financial means to do these kind of things? When someone's brand new in cybersecurity, they need a fundamental strong basis to build their cybersecurity career on. They don't need to go and spin up an Azure virtual machine before they know what the CIA triad is about. So please, please, if someone recommends to you to go spend thousands of dollars on a certification, on an entry-level certification, please don't. Please don't. There are so many uh, avenues that are free or extremely low cost that you can garner knowledge from. And I'm here to tell you, as someone who got into cybersecurity without having any prior experience in IT, for more or less, that it is possible. So please don't be discouraged by this. And if you're one of those people who is very experienced in cybersecurity and you're trying to help others, try to be more empathetic to people's situations and don't just automatically recommend that someone spend money. Which, the financial aspect of this t ties into my next point, that if you are trying to break into cybersecurity, you can't expect that getting a certification is going to automatically, magically get you a job. And the reason I bring this up kind of under a financial header is because I've been asked a couple of times if spending several thousands of dollars to get the Security Plus is a good idea. And my answer will always be no, regardless of how much experience you have, regardless of your education, your background, your hands-on experience, I don't care what it is. Please don't spend $7,000 to take an exam that costs $300. You really have to do a cost-benefit analysis on this. And if you're familiar with risk management or anything like that, you really need to calculate, why am I spending $7,000? What do you expect to come out of it? If you were guaranteed that spending $7,000 to pass the Security Plus was going to get you a $60,000 job as a SOC analyst, would you do it? Sure, but you don't have that guarantee. The Security Plus is a very, I mean, it's a great certification. I have it, and man, it really helped me solidify my fundamental skill set and my fundamental knowledge. But the thing is, is that the Security Plus is a very widespread certification. It's highly respectable, as is CompTIA. However, it's not promising that it's going to break you into the field. So I just want to set the expectation, a realistic one, that you shouldn't be spending thousands of dollars when you don't have any guarantee that getting these entry-level certifications is going to help you break into the field. I feel like that's a very common misconception and it leads to a lot of disappointment, which frustrates me because I want people to be excited about cybersecurity. I want them to grow their passion. I want them to continue trying to advance their career. So please don't do it. Another topic that's really important to me is when you're trying to break into cybersecurity or you're trying to move careers, maybe you already work in cybersecurity and you're trying to get into another subject area. So you go on Reddit or you go on Facebook and you read in the cybersecurity groups about all these people who are having success stories getting into cybersecurity, which are fantastic and they're encouraging and I love reading them. And I just find these so motivational at most points. But if you're a person who's going to read these stories and compare your experience and your education to another person and feel let down that someone with the exact same experience and education as you got a job and you didn't, then please don't read them. 
you need to be doing things during this time that are going to be uplifting to you, that are going to be motivational, that are going to help you persevere towards getting into cybersecurity. If you're going to be comparing your qualifications to another person's and their success to yours, try to do it with... I mean, honestly, you can't even really do it with a healthy mindset because you shouldn't be comparing yourself. There's always going to be something that's different, whether it's your attitude, whether it's your expected salary, whatever it is. So those stories are great to read and take as a grain of salt, but don't let yourself get down over them. One key point that I feel is underrated in cybersecurity is so many people focus on the technical aspects of cybersecurity and think that having a technical background and technical acumen is directly correlating to whether or not you'll get a job. And this simply isn't true. A lot of cybersecurity is companies or the government trying to identify people who are progressive enough, have a positive enough attitude, who have high enough work ethics, that even though they don't fully fulfill the qualifications desired by the company, that they will work and put in the time and effort so that they can achieve them. The soft skills are extremely important, just as important as technical acumen. If you don't have any soft skills, if you can't communicate with people, if you can't be um, a motivator and have a good attitude around your team, but you're the smartest person in everything technical and you have your CCIE and you have all these technical certifications, you're not someone I want to work with. And I think a lot of hiring managers will agree with that too. So really try to evaluate yourself and determine what are your soft skill strengths? What can you present yourself as? You should be going into your interview with the notion providing to the possible employer that that employer needs you. You are going to be a positive force to be reckoned with within their company. You're going to incite change. You're going to positively affect the team. You're going to motivate those around you. This is just as important to hiring managers as knowing how to configure policies and DLP is. Conversely to the topic of spending money earlier we discussed to get into the field of cybersecurity, I want to point out that there are many free resources to learn more about cybersecurity. I really, really want to kind of advance the thought of making sure to study the company that you're applying to. Study material that's related to the field you're trying to get in. Go on um, Percipio or try to go on Cybrary. Look for the deals that they have where they're having free months of where you can study things. Read articles, take a class at Stanford. There are many that are free that are cybersecurity related. Pick up on things that are related to what you want to do, but that don't cost you an arm and a leg. There are many ways to do this, and I'd be happy to discuss some with you if you let me know what you're interested in. And my last thought about this is, please don't lose hope. There's millions of positions that need to be filled in cybersecurity, and chances are you fit really well into one of them. You've just not found it yet. So you just need to be perseverant. You need to continuously be evaluating yourself to find your weaknesses and improve them, and you need to not give up. If you need any help, if you have any questions about breaking into cybersecurity, if you just need someone to vent to, feel free to comment down below. You can DM me on Instagram, whatever you feel comfortable with, and if I can, I'll help you out as best as I can. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I'll talk to you next week when the next video is uploaded. Ciao!